Hi everyone. In today's video, I'd like to talk a bit about George Shandor's book on piano playing and why I think it's one of the best books on the subject that I've read at least. What I love about this book is that it is, uh, it's very analytical, it's very logical, it's systematic. He really, he shows you how to break down problems in such a way that even the most seemingly terrifying difficulties can be approached in a way that is more easily understandable. It gives you some more concrete steps uh, to work towards, even in a very difficult piece. I think that his overall philosophy in the book, if I'm, if I'm not maybe oversimplifying it or misrepresenting him, is that first of all, you can uh, take complex problems, break them down into easily digestible chunks, learning to coordinate your body so that uh, all the parts of your body work together to produce a healthy technique, to avoid injury, to avoid uh, stress and tension, as well as practicing more efficiently, and not just more efficiently, but with a great deal of concentration so that you don't have to do as many repetitions of something. And I'd like to share with you too some more specific points that he has to say about these areas and why I think that they're, they're so important. One thing that I really like in the book is that he breaks technique down into more or less kind of five major areas, which are the free fall, which is basically just using gravity, pure gravity. You're not, you're trying not to use any muscular involvement at all. You're just letting your hands drop, basically. The free fall, there's rotation, which is mostly uh, talking about uh, rotating your, your forearm. Um, there's the staccato. He gives that its own chapter. Staccato thrust, what he calls the thrust. So in other words, a kind of uh, as opposed to the free fall, which is just letting your hands drop. The thrust is purely um, using only muscle, so you're not really letting the hands drop. If you're going to use a thrust, like a, a muscular impulse, you shouldn't be dropping your hands from a great height because it produces an ugly sound. It's a very harsh sound, and it's also not good for your hands to be dropping them from a distance and kind of crashing them down on the keys with muscular force. So the thrust, that's its own separate thing. And then there's also, um, you kind of groups five finger patterns scales and arpeggios into like another kind of category on its own i guess more finger fingery stuff one thing that's great too is that he provides lots of examples from repertoire where to apply these techniques he also gives you pictures illustrating each technique kind of step by step how to do each thing from the you know staccato to the, to the free fall to the thrust and i'll show you some of those pictures right now so just to give you an example of some of the pictures that he uses here's a kind of like time-lapse photography style uh, demonstration of how to do the staccato. There are notes at the bottom and there's lots of explanations about how to do it so he doesn't expect you to just copy the pictures that would be um, too difficult to follow. Another thing that's very helpful about the book is that with each technique he also provides a list and pictures of some things to avoid just so you can kind of self-diagnose if you're doing the technique more or less correctly. So here for instance he doesn't just show the correct position that he's trying to demonstrate, but he also gives you examples of some things to look out for, like if a finger is collapsed or pulled too much or excessively curved. There are also tons of examples from repertoire where he shows you how you can actually apply these basic techniques, these kind of five categories of techniques uh, that he's come up with to actual repertoire. And he uses this symbol system that you see up here at the top. So in the repertoire, it'll show like, say here's a letter A, so you know, you'd use a free fall for that octave. And then here there's various arrows showing, you know, the different, the position of the wrist. And at the end of the section on technique, he also provides this sort of technical analysis with all the symbols, which technique to use of the first movement of Beethoven's Waldstein Sonata. So it's, it's sort of interesting to see his thought process and how these basic categories of technique can be applied to pretty much anything. He talks quite a bit as well about finding the perfect hand position, the most comfortable hand position on each note, and more or less just connecting each position. Like that is essentially what playing the piano is. You, if you were to slow it down to like really, really slow motion, you are just basically playing one note at a time and connecting each note. So the ideal is to find like the perfect kind of coordinated, comfortable hand position on each note and work on connecting those as smoothly and comfortably as possible. Also talks about something that's really important to know is not pressing down on keys after they've already been played. As soon as you've produced a sound, nothing that you do after that point is of any use. So if you're continuing to press, you're wasting energy, and it can also cause uh, chronic hand problems. So he says that that's sort of a, a carryover from what was called, I think, the, the Beboom on the clavichord, where you could actually produce a kind of vibrato on the clavichord, but that doesn't work on a modern piano. So you're essentially just, you're tiring yourself out and you're, you know, you're wasting energy pressing down for nothing. There's also some really good thoughts about using the wrist because something that I've come to realize over the last couple of years is that the, the thumb and the wrist are probably uh, two of the most underrated but extremely important parts of piano technique. 
and uh, the two are inextricably linked. So the, the, the wrist has to kind of help the thumb, the arm has to help the thumb, and vice versa. They help each other move around. And so he talks about how for each thumb stroke, the wrist has to be lowered slightly. Um, because if you're trying to, if your wrist is very high and you're trying to lower your thumb, I mean, the thumb, it's like st stretching down to reach the keyboard. That's really exaggerated, but that's the idea. So you're essentially, you're straining your thumb to reach down if you don't kind of just place it a little bit lower so that the thumb is closer to the keyboard. He also has a good reminder about shifting in and out, uh, depending on whether you're playing the black keys, you'd shift in a little bit more, and the white keys, you shift out towards your body a little bit. Also very important to note, but um, for I think for especially for say intermediate level pianists, that's that's a really good pointer actually. You're not just trying to stay in one fixed static position. You have to be constantly moving around uh, the key the keys depending on the key the geography of the keyboard. Another thing that he talks about that's very important to note is using the right muscles for the job. So um, when you're playing chords and things, make sure that you're using you know your shoulders, your upper arms, your back to get more power. But if you're doing more delicate passage work, you don't want to be applying like too much pressure to the keys, more than you need. And he goes into quite a bit of detail too about like which muscles you use for which activities. It's very helpful. He goes through each each part of the body that you use in piano playing and how to use it as effectively as possible. And also, this is just a good general tip for pretty much anything you do in life. But when you're playing piano, listen to your body. So if you feel pain, if you feel discomfort, something is sore or stiff or tense, any of those things at all, something's not right. It shouldn't feel like that. And he's pretty adamant about that in this book as well. And that goes back to one of the earlier points about learning to coordinate the body better. Like it's, you shouldn't be feeling any of those symptoms. If you do, then you have to stop and evaluate and uh, check what's wrong. And coming back to what I said earlier about how one of his uh, philosophies is that with concentrated, really efficient practice, you don't have to do a million repetitions of things. Uh, in that same context, he also talks about uh, the use of exercises and how exercises can be helpful. If there's a certain concept that you need to work on. Having some kind of an exercise, it can be beneficial, but the exercise itself shouldn't be the goal. So your goal should be to really to master the technique, get it into your fingers, into your mind, into your body as quickly as possible so that you don't need the exercise anymore. His, his idea is basically if your body, if everything is kind of well coordinated, well connected, everything's working together, then you really shouldn't have to do a ton of um, finger exercises, let's say, or just exercise of any kind. You know, you do as many as you need, but um, beyond that, um, mostly just getting your technique from repertoire. That's that seems to be his philosophy. Again, I hope I'm not like mis misrepresenting him, but that's that was my understanding. Part of two, um, using the body correctly and coming back to the importance of the wrist and the thumb and everything being uh, connected, is not overextending fingers. So not using fingers to stretch and reach notes. That's really Getting around the keyboard is actually really the job of your your arm, your forearm, your wrist, your shoulder. Those are the, you know the, that's the equipment that can, moves the hand around. All the fingers should do is once they're in place, once they've been placed in their correct positions by um, this whole apparatus, they just really have to do minimal work to press the key. Um, but you don't want to have the fingers being uh, doing all of the the heavy lifting. That being said, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't use your fingers at all, that they're not they're not just these like limp noodles at the end of your hand that you're flopping around the keyboard. He talks about having sort of elastic and resilient fingertips, having this kind of almost like an electricity in the fingertips. So the arm and the shoulder and everything, they carry the hand and the fingers to where it needs to get. And uh, the fingers need to still do some amount of active work to press the key. It's, it's a combination of things. And that usually problems occur when we isolate one part of the body and try to do everything with the other or with just one part. And finally, in addition to all that other stuff that um, is in the book, all this great advice about technique and, and uh, practicing and everything, he also has sections as well on pedaling, memorization, performance, improving tone quality, rubato, phrasing, and, and ornaments. So uh, he, he covers just about everything you could want in a piano related book. So it's, it's one of my favorite books on the subject both for the range of topics that it includes and great advice about each one, um, but also for the depth that he goes into with some of the, the, the bigger topics, like especially technique and how to use the body and everything. So if you're looking for a very systematic, very logical, analytical approach that's e extremely readable, very well presented, it's not, uh, it's not a tedious read at all. It was actually very enjoyable to read. Lots of great advice, lots of stuff, even if you're studying on your own. It doesn't matter, I think, if you're a 
maybe an intermediate pianist, advanced, maybe even beginner if you're working with a teacher. I think there's something in this book for everyone. So if you haven't already read it, then I highly recommend checking it out. I, I guarantee you, you will get at least something out of the book. I certainly got a lot of great advice from it and I'm indebted to it. So uh, yeah, check it out if you haven't already read it and I will see you in the next video.